All right, we've arrived at our last day in this module of machine code programming. Uh, and so today we're just going to pick up a, a bunch of mostly unrelated topics that we've uh, not have had time to cover up to this point. So we'll start by talking about uh, some different data structures like arrays and uh, structs and in, in assembly language rather than in C, which we've already uh, seen them. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, floating point at the assembly code level. Uh, and that'll pretty much wrap things up and I'll give a quick teaser at the end for uh, the uh, transition to Y86. Okay, so let's talk about arrays in assembly. So as we said with C, uh, an array is simply a block of memory. So it's just a bunch of bits. And then in order for that to be useful, we need to know the type of the elements in the array and that tells us how big those things are and that's the context so unless we have bits and context we don't uh, have uh, an array so uh, arrays are laid out contiguously and uh, in general they are of fixed length uh, and that length is not stored as part of the array so we have to store that somewhere else uh, so here is an example from C so we declare an array of three elements and each element is going to be four bytes wide we know that because of the type so the total size of this array is going to be three times four or 12 bytes here's a picture of how it uh, would be laid out in memory so the first element would be at the base address of the entire array and then we would add four to that address to get the address of the next element and then we would add eight to get to uh, the next element so hopefully you can see now uh, how uh, the addressing modes in x86 can help us uh, to access these so we can use the indirect addressing mode here um, to uh, access memory here and we can use the fixed offset to allow us to access locations beyond the beginning of the array so we'll put the base in a register and then to access the first element we can just dereference that we don't need to add anything and then we can just add offsets to access uh, the next uh, elements in the array so the, since the array name is essentially a pointer to the first element, there's actually a generic formula for accessing the ith element. And that formula is base plus size times i. And maybe it's worth going back to the previous slide and working out this formula to make sure that that uh, makes sense. Uh, and so this is what C is doing under the hood. So it's just using pointer arithmetic uh, to increase the address by intervals of the, or by multiples of the element width. Uh, and so, you know, stuff or stuff plus zero is the address of the first element, stuff plus one is the address of the second element, and so forth. Um, and remember that we talked about an indexing as being equivalent to pointer arithmetic plus uh, a dereference. So in assembly, this is where the scaled index addressing mode comes in really handy because it's essentially that formula. So remember the formula is base plus size times i. That's exactly what this addressing mode does. You put the base register here, you put the index register here, which is the I part, and then you can scale by the size, which is fixed. You know it because you know the type of the array. So uh, base register, scale, or base index, sorry, base register, index register, and then the scale factor. So for 32-bit elements, for instance, uh, our scale factor would be four uh, for four bytes each. So uh, here's a quick quiz. So let's assume that we had an array called data. It has 10 64 uh, bit integers. So here's a picture of what the first few elements may look like in memory with their uh, memory addresses. So here is a loop in C that uh, basically just sets all those elements to zero. And here is the corresponding code in assembly with uh, a little bit left out. And so I'm asking you to fill in the blank. So we initialize RBX to uh, the base address of the entire array. Uh, we set RDX to zero, and then we have a jump to middle loop here where we compare RDX to 10, and if RDX is less than 10, we jump uh, back to the beginning and execute the loop body. So the loop body itself is moving uh, zero into a particular location in memory. This should be move Q, uh, not QL, by the way. Uh, and then uh, after it does that move, it increments uh, RDX. So it says RDX equals RDX plus one. So what is the memory operand that needs to go right here in order for us to set each of the elements of this array in turn? Um, and as a hint, you'll probably want to use scaled indexed uh, addressing here. So take a second and see if you can write out what that memory operand should be in this case. 
Okay, so again, remembering that this should really be move Q and not move L. Um, we want to use scaled indexed addressing mode. Uh, the base here is just the uh, base of the entire array, so that's going to be RBX. Um, the index register is RDX, so this is going to go from 0 up to, but not including 10, which is uh, the indices. Uh, that we would use in the C code to access that. So that's the index register. Uh, and then the scale factor is the size of the data in the array. Uh, and so since we know that there are 64-bit integers, uh, each of them is 8 bytes wide. So this is the memory operand that will uh, implement this C code using this assembly code. OK, um, the final observation here is that uh, and this is not super important in this course, but this does generalize cleanly to multiple dimensions. And it is worth thinking a little bit about how that works. It, it does sort of ratchet up the complexity uh, and the difficulty of thinking about it, but it does, does generalize quite cleanly and you can get uh, the same sort of uh, formula for calculating an uh, element offset in multiple dimensions uh, past uh, the first dimension. So. Um, you can think of the uh, this declaration here, grid 4, 3, as being a four element array of three element arrays of 16-bit integers. So you can just think about multidimensional arrays as being arrays of arrays. Uh, and uh, in C, these arrays of arrays are stored in row major order, meaning that the outer dimension uh, is specified first, and those are um, the element, the inner dimensions are stored as individual arrays inside the uh, outer uh, dimension. So here's what this looks like in two dimensions. So uh, for uh, a four by three uh, array, we'd have you know four elements in the outermost uh, dimension, and each of those is an array of three elements in the inner uh, dimension. And so they're laid out like this in memory uh, with these offsets. Another way of thinking about this, if you want to just think about all the elements as sort of being piled up in memory, um, they're uh, arranged like this. And again, it's in row, row major order because all the row is uh, sequential, and then we go to the next row. And again, uh, there is there are formulas for the higher dimensions. They get increasingly complicated, obviously, as you add more dimensions. But this does generalize cleanly to two-dimensional and three-dimensional, even though it becomes uh, far more difficult to start to visualize in three dimensions. And then once you get to four dimensions, it's uh, you're pretty much just sort of working in the math and, and not really visualizing it. We're, we're not going to go that far in this course. Um, but it, it is useful to be able to understand this and to work on it. If you, even if you don't become comfortable uh, doing this in three dimensions.